the Amazon rainforest, one of the last uncharted wildernesses on Earth, a green ocean stretching over 5.5 million square kilometers. What if I told you there are more than trees and rivers hidden beneath this dense canopy? Yes, ancient civilizations, lost buildings, treasure troves, and maybe just maybe even crashed alien spaceships. Well, fasten your seatbelts because we are about to journey into this verdant labyrinth. But we won't need machetes or bug spray, instead we're soaring above and beyond thanks to some radical technology. Let's dive right into the heartbeat of our journey today, LiDAR technology. This isn't just any run-of-the-mill tech. Picture a flying machine, buzzing high above the Earth, unspooling a colossal web of laser beams down into the mysterious depth of the Amazon rainforest. It's a bit like sonar, but instead of sound it uses light. Thus the name LiDAR, short for Light Detection and Ranging. At first glance, it sounds straightforward, emits pulses of light and measure how long they take to return after hitting an object. But the genius of LiDAR is in the sheer scale of it. We're not just talking about a few lasers here and there. We're talking about millions upon millions of laser pulses shot out in a quick-fire staccato, each one of them working like an echolocation ping. This laser orchestra is conducted from high above usually from an aircraft or drone, which allows for a massive swathe of land to be covered in a single sweep. The lasers cut through the dense tree canopy, getting a snapshot of the underlying topography, the contours and undulations, the hidden dips and secret rises, even the ghostly outlines of long-forgotten structures. But it's not just a one-and-done operation. The aircraft fly over the same patch multiple times, shooting laser pulses from different angles. These different perspectives can then be compiled into a rich, detailed 3D image, giving us an unprecedented view of the Amazon's secret floor. It's like throwing flour on an invisible man. Suddenly, you can see his shape. In the same way, LIDAR allows us to detect the subtle fingerprints left by ancient civilizations on the forest floor. Earthworks, terraces, roads, fortifications, even entire cities all visible to us for the first time. And the best part, LiDAR allows us to see the world in a whole new way, without disturbing it. By shedding light, both figuratively and literally, on the secrets of the Amazon, LiDAR has become an invaluable tool for scientists to study this part of our world. While we've been focusing on the Amazon and its secrets, it's important to note that this magnificent rainforest is not an isolated entity. It's part of a global tapestry of ancient civilizations and cultures, many of which may have had connections to the societies that once thrived here. The most immediate connections can be found in the broader context of pre-Columbian civilizations. The Inca Empire, for instance, stretched along the Andean mountain range just to the west of the Amazon. Archaeological evidence has suggested that the Incas might have ventured into the Amazon basin and interacted with the peoples living there. Even more intriguing are potential connections to civilizations far away. For instance, pottery styles found in the Amazon have shown striking similarities to Polynesian designs, sparking debates about potential trans-Pacific contact. Could adventurous Polynesian seafarers have navigated their way to South America, establishing contact with Amazonian societies? While definitive proof remains elusive, the possibility adds another layer of intrigue to our understanding of the Amazon's past. Adding to the potential global connections of the Amazon, are theories regarding the distribution of plant species. For instance, the coca plant, native to the Andean region and Amazon basin, was used for millennia by indigenous societies in South America for its stimulant properties. Interestingly, traces of coca and nicotine from tobacco plants native to the Americas were found in Egyptian mummies. Could this point to ancient trade routes connecting the New World and the Old? As of now, this remains a controversial and largely unproven hypothesis, yet the sheer suggestion of it hints at a potentially far more interconnected ancient world than we ever imagined. Lastly, let's not forget the potential link between the Amazon and extraterrestrial civilizations. As we touched on in our earlier segment about alien spaceship theories, the idea of ancient alien contact isn't new and the Amazon is no exception in these discussions. From hypothetical lost spaceships to theories that ancient Amazonians had celestial knowledge beyond their means, the potential for such interstellar connections only adds to the mystery and intrigue of this incredible rainforest. Let's take a trip back in time. Imagine a world where the Amazon rainforest isn't just a sprawling, teeming wilderness, but a vibrant, bustling, complex human landscape. It's a challenging thought, isn't it? 
After all, the Amazon is often portrayed as the world's most inhospitable jungle, devoid of human touch. But as it turns out, this might be far from the truth. Recent LiDAR explorations have revealed a startling possibility. The Amazon, contrary to popular belief, was once home to a dense, interconnected network of sophisticated pre-Columbian civilizations. We're talking about highly organized societies, complete with roads, bridges, canals and plazas, living in harmony with the jungle instead of against it. As if pulled straight from the pages of a high fantasy novel, these civilizations built sprawling urban landscapes, replete with earthworks and geoglyphs, geometrical figures etched onto the landscape that can still be seen today. Some of these earthworks are so large that they can only be truly appreciated from an aerial view, reminiscent of the famous Nazca Lines in Peru. One of the most compelling discoveries includes evidence of man-made soil known as Terra Preta, literally Black Earth in Portuguese. Richer and more fertile than the surrounding soils, Terra Preta is dotted with shards of pottery and bits of charcoal, suggesting that these regions were once hubs of human activity, perhaps even centers of agriculture. Most exciting of all is the sheer scale of these lost civilizations. Archaeologists estimate that at their peak, they may have sustained a population of millions, challenging the narrative that the Amazon was a counterfeit paradise, incapable of supporting large-scale human life. But why then did these grand civilizations vanish? Why did the rainforest reclaim its lost territories? It's a haunting question, and one we are still struggling to answer. Was it due to European diseases brought by explorers and colonists wiping out up to 95% of the indigenous population? Or were there other, more mysterious factors at play? This is a puzzle that remains to be solved. Our story takes a turn for the otherworldly as we venture into the realm of speculation and wonder. Is it possible that among the ancient ruins and hidden treasures of the Amazon, there are remnants of extraterrestrial visitors? If the concept of lost civilizations and hidden treasures wasn't enough to get your neurons firing, then hold on to your tinfoil hats because we're about to journey into the realm of the extraordinary. We're all familiar with the popular concept of unidentified flying objects or UFOs. For decades, accounts of strange objects soaring through our skies have been reported from every corner of the globe. Sometimes these objects are said to crash, leaving debris and occasionally traces of technology far beyond our current understanding. Could it be possible that one or more of these mysterious visitors came to rest in the vastness of the Amazon rainforest? If so, such a crash would almost certainly have been obscured by the dense jungle canopy, potentially leaving an alien craft hidden and untouched for hundreds if not thousands of years. What secrets might such a craft contain? Advanced technology, unimagined power sources or even evidence of life beyond our planet? Imagine for a moment the implications of finding an alien spaceship in the heart of the Amazon. Not only would it irrevocably confirm the existence of extraterrestrial life, but it could also provide us with insights into technology and knowledge far beyond our current understanding. It would be, without a doubt, one of the most monumental discoveries in human history. Critics of this theory argue that it's just a fanciful flight of imagination, grounded more in the realm of science fiction than scientific fact. But proponents point out that the Amazon, with its difficult terrain and dense vegetation, is the perfect hiding spot for such an extraordinary secret. From the lost civilizations to possible extraterrestrial findings, we've taken a dive into the mysteries and wonders of the Amazon. But the Amazon isn't just about hidden cities or hypothetical alien spaceships. It's a place of ongoing exploration and revelation where scientists are continually unearthing new discoveries that change our understanding of this vast ecosystem. In recent years, with the help of LIDAR and satellite imaging, we've seen an explosion of new finds within the Amazon's dense canopy. The discovery of so-called geoglyphs, intricate large-scale earthworks, suggest a complex, sophisticated society that lived in the Amazon before European arrival. Some of these geometric shapes measure more than a football field in diameter, hinting at a highly organized society capable of substantial construction projects. But it's not only the footprint of ancient humans that are being unveiled. In 2019, an entirely new coral reef system was discovered at the mouth of the Amazon River, a thriving, colorful biosphere in a place where no one thought such a thing could exist. This finding not only highlights the Amazon's abundant life, but also reminds us that even in the 21st century, there are still places on our own planet that remain largely unexplored. 
in the realm of flora and fauna, the Amazon continues to be a treasure trove of biodiversity. Every year, scientists catalogue hundreds of new species from brilliantly coloured birds and frogs to towering trees and delicate orchids. And these are just the species we know about. There are undoubtedly countless other organisms out there, hidden deep within the forest waiting to be discovered. Imagine, if you will, the glint of gold shimmering in the dappled sunlight filtering through the dense canopy of the Amazon. A rustle of leaves, a clatter of falling fruit, and the subtle whisper of secrets, long buried in the verdant undergrowth of the jungle. Treasure. The word itself conjures up images of glittering gems, priceless artifacts, and ancient relics of civilizations long past. When we think of the Amazon rainforest, we might first imagine its unrivaled biodiversity. But the recent LIDAR findings have begun to paint a new picture, that of a land brimming with the potential for hidden treasures. The ancient civilizations that called the Amazon their home were not just adept builders, but also skilled craftsmen, potters, weavers and metallurgists. Their skill in goldsmithing was particularly renowned, a fact attested by the beautiful gold artifacts recovered from the region. Hidden among the ruins of these forgotten cities, there could potentially be caches of such treasures waiting to be discovered. Gold ornaments, beautifully crafted pottery, intricately woven textiles and even precious gemstones could be buried. I hope you Today let's delve into a cosmos filled with gods, creation, destruction and rebirth. We're venturing into the captivating realm of the Aztec mythology, specifically the legend of the Five Suns. The Aztecs, a powerful civilization that existed in central Mexico from the 14th to the 16th centuries, had a rich and complex cosmology. But what are these Five Suns? How do they tie into the Aztec understanding of the universe? And what can they tell us about the nature of existence and time? Let's find out. Today we're delving into the mysteries of an ancient Mesoamerican civilization. That's right, we're talking about the Aztecs, a people who shaped a vast empire, brimming with a rich medium of myths and legends. But among these, one stands out. The myth of the Five Suns. This isn't just a story, it's a cosmogonic tale, a narrative of the world's creation, its destruction and rebirth, playing out in a cycle of five suns. Now, what do we mean by suns? In the context of the Aztec myth, a sun refers to an epoch or an age, a specific period governed by a particular deity. Each sun, each age, has its distinct characteristics, inhabitants, and ultimately its end. So the cycle of five suns represents the cyclical nature of time, the continuous process of creation and destruction of life and death, reflecting the Aztecs' understanding of the universe. But here's the fascinating part. The Aztecs believed that we human beings are currently living in the age of the fifth sun. That's right, we are, according to this ancient civilization, in the fifth iteration of cosmic existence. What happened to the previous four? What might happen to our current sun? That's what we're going to explore in this video as we journey through time, mythology and the cosmos, according to the Aztecs. So get ready to step into a different worldview, a different understanding of time and existence. Because, as we've often seen, exploring these different perspectives not only enriches our understanding of the past, but also helps us reflect on our own perceptions, our own place in the cosmos. In Aztec cosmology, the first sun, also known as the Sun of Earth, was a time of great beings, and it is said to have been ruled by the god Tezcatlipoca. This era was inhabited by giants, creatures of enormous size and strength. These giants were the first inhabitants of the Earth, born from the primordial elements, living in a time of abundance. However, despite their strength and the abundance that surrounded them, these giants were not respectful towards the divine entities. There was a deep sense of arrogance among them, a feeling that they were invincible and above any divine authority. They failed to perform the necessary rituals and sacrifices that were believed to be crucial in maintaining balance and harmony with the gods and the universe. Their arrogance did not go unnoticed. Tezcatlipoca, the god of the night sky and the embodiment of change through conflict, was particularly displeased. As a consequence of the giant's disrespect and failure to honor the gods, the world was set into chaos. Ferocious jaguars, creatures that symbolized the night sun and the mysterious earth, were unleashed. They roamed the world, hunting down the giants and eventually led to their destruction. This marked the cataclysmic end of the first sun, symbolizing that no matter how mighty one may be, 
a lack of respect for the divine and the natural order could lead to downfall. The second son, known as the Son of Wind, was governed by Quetzalcoatl, the feathered serpent deity, a god of wind, air, and learning. Now, this was an era that was distinct from its predecessor. The inhabitants of this era were not giants, but humans, beings of a more modest scale who inherited the earth after the giant's downfall. But the world of the Son of Wind was not stable. As the god of wind, Quetzalcoatl had a tempestuous temperament that reflected in the era he ruled. Unpredictable and intense windstorms were a common phenomenon making life challenging for the people. These were not just any winds. The winds of this era were fierce, monstrous hurricanes capable of transforming humans into monkeys. They represented the tumultuous relationship between the gods and humans. Despite the people's best efforts to appease the gods and live in harmony with nature, they were unable to prevent the cataclysm. The era of the Son of Wind ended when one of these great hurricanes swept across the earth, leaving no stone unturned. As a result, all the humans were turned into monkeys, doomed to lead their lives in the forests. The lesson from this sun was that no matter how much we evolve and learn, the force of nature is beyond human control, a reminder of our place in the cosmos. The third sun, known as the Sun of Fire, was overseen by the rain god Tlaloc. In the age of the Sun of Fire, the planet was populated by people who had to live amidst the flames and heat. But unlike the previous eras, it wasn't the god's wrath that destroyed this age, but a betrayal of the heart. You see, Tlaloc was married to the beautiful goddess Xochiquetzal, who was, unfortunately, abducted by Tezcatlipoca, the god of the night sky. This act of treachery not only angered Tlaloc, but also led to a cataclysmic event. Heartbroken and enraged, Tlaloc refused to send rain to the earth. Instead, he sent a rain of fire, a volcanic inferno that scorched the earth and turned the humans into turkeys, an animal that symbolizes Earth's connection with the heavens in Aztec culture. Fire has dual symbolism in Aztec mythology. It represents destruction, yes, but also purification and transformation. The humans turned turkeys were not seen as victims, but as beings transformed through a painful yet cleansing process. This era teaches us that emotions are powerful, capable of affecting not just individuals but entire civilizations. A reminder of the human capacity for change, both destructive and transformative. The fourth sun, also known as the Sun of Water, was ruled by the god Tlaloc's sister, Chalchiotlikai. She was the goddess of water, rivers, seas, streams, storms and baptism, symbolizing fertility and birth. In her era, the world was brimming with prosperity and abundance. The earth was drenched in her generosity, nurturing life in all its myriad forms. However, this period of bounty wasn't meant to last. As with previous ages, a catastrophic event signaled the end of this era. But instead of fire or wind, it was a massive flood that swallowed the earth and its inhabitants. Kalkiutlikue, feeling compassion for the humans, turned them into fish so they could survive the deluge. Some interpretations even suggest that she wept for the lost humans, her tears adding to the floodwaters. But why a flood? Water is life-sustaining, but it can also be overwhelmingly destructive. The Aztecs recognized this duality in their mythology. The era of the fourth sun is a reflection of this paradox, symbolizing both the life-giving abundance of water and its potential for uncontrolled cataclysmic destruction. The transformation of humans into fish can be seen as an adaptation to survive adversity, a testament to the resilience of life amid cataclysm. This brings us to the present age, the fifth sun, also known as the sun of movement. This era is ruled by Nanahuatzin, the humble one, who sacrificed himself in fire to become the sun. But the sun did not move across the sky. Hungry for human hearts and the energy of sacrifice, it remained still until Ehecatl, the god of wind, blew the sun into motion. The sun of movement is characterized by its instability, reflecting the tumultuous and dynamic nature of life. The Aztecs believed that this world would end in earthquakes, a testament to its inherent instability. This is why the sun of movement is often associated with Olin, the Aztec symbol for movement and earthquakes which features at the center of the sun stone or the Aztec calendar. Yet the era of the fifth sun is also the age of humanity, an age of conscious beings capable of wisdom and folly, of creation and destruction. This is the era of us, the people. The Aztecs believe that it is our duty to keep the sun moving across the sky to prevent the end of the world. 
It is our sacrifices, symbolic or literal, our actions and intentions that feed the sun and maintain the balance of the cosmos. And so, the myth of the fifth sun imparts a lesson of responsibility and stewardship. It suggests that we are not mere passive observers of the universe, but active participants with a crucial role in maintaining its harmony. It's a powerful reminder that our actions have consequences, affecting not just ourselves but the world around us, and perhaps even the cosmos itself. And with that it challenges us to live with awareness and intention, to make choices that contribute to the balance and well-being of our world. The myth of the five suns wasn't just a bedtime story for the Aztec people, it was deeply woven into the fabric of their society and reflected in their everyday lives. The Aztecs believed in a cyclical cosmos where creation and destruction were part of the grand cosmic dance. The myth shaped their understanding of time, space and human existence. It influenced their religious practices, their societal structures and their interpretation of natural phenomena. For instance, the Aztec calendar, known as the Xiu Pohuali, is cyclical, reflecting the recurring epochs in the Five Suns myth. It consisted of 18 months, each containing 20 days with an additional five unlucky days, adding up to a 365-day solar year. Another aspect influenced by the Five Suns myth is the Aztec rituals and sacrifices. The Aztecs believed that the gods sacrificed themselves to ensure the continuity of the world. In return, the gods required human beings to offer sacrifices to sustain them. This belief fostered a culture of ritual sacrifice which, though viewed as gruesome by modern standards, was a deeply spiritual act for the Aztecs, a way to maintain the balance and continuity of the cosmos. Now let's think about this for a moment, a myth, a story, shaping an entire civilization's worldview, their understanding of the cosmos, their daily lives. It's a powerful testament to the power of narrative, of mythology, in shaping human cultures and civilizations. It reminds us that the stories we tell, the myths we believe, they shape our world in profound ways. They guide our actions, shape our societies, and influence our understanding of our place in the cosmos. But here's the ultimate question. What does the myth of the five suns tell us about the human experience, about our quest to understand the universe and our place in it? Maybe it tells us that despite our different cultures, different myths and different beliefs, we all share a common quest, a quest to understand the cosmos, to find our place in it, and to ensure its continuity. Today we're embarking on a journey through time and space to explore the civilization of the Aztecs. This ancient empire left behind a legacy of incredible architecture, complex cultural practices and tantalizing mysteries that continue to captivate our imaginations. But how much do we really know about the Aztecs? Were they connected to other ancient civilizations such as the Egyptians? Did they have any contact with extraterrestrial beings or the Anunnaki? Join me as we delve into the wonders of Aztec architecture, the theories surrounding their achievements and the dramatic fall of this once mighty empire. Welcome to life's biggest questions. Now that that's been said, let's continue on now. The Aztecs were a powerful and sophisticated civilization that rose to prominence in the 14th century in the region we now know as Mexico. Their architecture was both functional and symbolic, reflecting their religious beliefs, social structure and artistic prowess. Let's delve deeper into the key features of Aztec architecture and the methods they employed to create these awe-inspiring structures. Aztec cities were meticulously planned, and their capital, Tenochtitlan, was no exception. Built on an island in Lake Texcoco, the city was designed with a grid pattern, featuring canals and causeways for efficient transportation and flood control. The city was divided into four main districts, each with its own central marketplace and ceremonial center. At the heart of Tenochtitlan lay the sacred precinct, a walled area containing temples, palaces and public buildings. One of the most iconic structures in Aztec architecture was the Step Pyramid, which served as the primary temple for religious ceremonies and rituals. These pyramids were typically constructed using a core of adobe bricks, covered with cut stones or stucco, and adorned with intricate carvings and frescoes. The Templo Mayor in Tenochtitlan was an enormous double pyramid dedicated to the gods Huitzilopochtli, the god of the sun and war, and Tlaloc, the god of rain and fertility. The Aztecs also built impressive palaces for their nobility and ruling class, which served as both residences and administrative centers. 
These palaces were often adorned with elaborate murals and sculptures, showcasing the skill and creativity of Aztec artisans. Ball courts were another common feature in Aztec cities, where the ritualistic ball game known as Olamalistli was played. These courts were built with high walls and sloping sides, with stone rings for scoring mounted on the walls. To construct their impressive architecture, the Aztecs relied on a combination of skilled labor, simple tools, and local materials. They used volcanic stone, such as basalt and andesite, which were abundant in the region for their buildings. The stones were shaped using rudimentary tools made from harder materials like obsidian. The Aztecs also made use of wooden scaffolding and ramps to lift and maneuver the massive stones into place. While they didn't use the wheel or pulleys, their clever use of levers and ropes allowed them to move and position these heavy materials with remarkable precision. The incredible achievements of the Aztecs have led some to speculate about the possibility of outside influence or assistance. Let's take a closer look at the theories surrounding potential connections between the Aztecs and extraterrestrial beings or the Anunnaki, a group of deities from ancient Mesopotamian mythology. Proponents of the ancient astronaut theory argue that extraterrestrials may have visited Earth in the distant past, sharing their advanced knowledge and technology with ancient civilizations like the Aztecs. They point to certain aspects of Aztec culture, such as their advanced understanding of astronomy and their detailed calendar system, as evidence of potential alien influence. The Aztec religion also plays a significant role in these theories as their pantheon of gods included beings with supernatural powers and abilities. The Aztecs believed that their gods had the power to control the elements and influence human events, and some theorize that these gods may have been extraterrestrial beings or even the Anunnaki, who are said to have shaped human civilization in Mesopotamian myths. Certain artifacts and artwork found in Aztec ruins have also fueled speculation about possible alien connections, some carvings and sculptures depict humanoid figures with elongated skulls or what appear to be helmets, leading some to suggest that these might represent extraterrestrial beings. Other artifacts feature complex geometric patterns and designs that are strikingly similar to those found in other ancient cultures around the world, sparking theories about a shared extraterrestrial influence. While these theories are certainly intriguing and capture the imagination, it's important to note that there is no concrete evidence to support the idea that the Aztecs had contact with extraterrestrials or the Anunnaki. Many researchers argue that these theories overlook the ingenuity and resourcefulness of the Aztecs themselves, who were able to achieve remarkable feats of engineering and artistry without any outside assistance. In fact, many of the similarities between Aztec artifacts and those of other ancient cultures can be attributed to the concept of convergent evolution, in which different societies independently develop similar solutions to common challenges. While the possibility of alien or Anunnaki connections cannot be definitively ruled out, it's essential to recognize and appreciate the remarkable achievements of the Aztecs on their own merits. One of the most fascinating aspects of ancient architecture is the prevalence of pyramids across various cultures and regions, including the Aztecs in Mexico and the ancient Egyptians in Africa. These remarkable structures have led many to wonder about the possible connections between these civilizations and their shared architectural styles. Let's explore the similarities and differences between Aztec and Egyptian pyramids and consider the theories that attempt to explain these connections. Both the Aztecs and ancient Egyptians built step pyramids featuring a series of stacked platforms that gradually decrease in size as they rise. The pyramids served as sacred sites for religious rituals with temples or sanctuaries located at the top. However, the function and design of these pyramids differ in some key aspects. Egyptian pyramids, such as the Great Pyramid of Giza, were primarily used as tombs for pharaohs, while Aztec pyramids functioned as temples and platforms for religious ceremonies, the construction materials and techniques employed by the two civilizations also varied. Egyptian pyramids were built using massive limestone blocks, often weighing several tons, while Aztec pyramids were typically constructed from smaller adobe bricks covered with cut stones or stucco. Additionally, Egyptian pyramids featured smooth, sloping sides, whereas Aztec pyramids were characterized by their stepped design with terraces and staircases, so, what could explain the similarities between these two seemingly distinct cultures? 
One theory suggests that both civilizations may have been influenced by a common older source, such as the legendary lost continent of Atlantis or even extraterrestrial beings. However, there is little evidence to support these claims, and many researchers argue that the similarities can be attributed to the independent development of similar architectural styles in response to shared cultural and religious beliefs. Another theory proposes that ancient trade routes or cultural exchanges between the two civilizations may have facilitated the sharing of architectural ideas and techniques, while there is some evidence to suggest that ancient cultures such as the Olmecs in Mexico and the ancient Egyptians had indirect contact through trade networks, there is no concrete proof that these interactions led to the transmission of architectural styles. In conclusion, the similarities between Aztec and Egyptian pyramids are indeed fascinating. But the evidence for a direct connection between the two civilizations is limited. The shared architectural features may be the result of convergent evolution as both cultures independently developed similar solutions to their religious and cultural needs. As we continue to study these incredible structures, it's crucial to appreciate the ingenuity and resourcefulness of both the Aztecs and ancient Egyptians in creating these architectural marvels that have stood the test of time. The Aztec Empire, which once dominated much of present-day Mexico, came to a sudden and dramatic end in the early 16th century. But what led to the collapse of this once thriving civilization? Let's delve into the factors that contributed to the fall of the Aztecs and the lasting impact of their decline. In 1519, the Spanish conquistador Hernán Cortés arrived in Mexico with a small contingent of soldiers aiming to explore and conquer new lands on behalf of the Spanish crown. He formed alliances with several indigenous tribes who were unhappy with Aztec rule, notably the Tlaxcalans, and this support was crucial in his campaign against the Aztecs. The first encounter between the Spanish and the Aztecs took place in Tenochtitlan, where the Aztec ruler Moctezuma II initially welcomed Cortés and his men. However, tensions soon escalated, and the Spanish took Moctezuma hostage in an attempt to control the city. This led to a series of conflicts known as the Siege of Tenochtitlan, which ultimately resulted in the destruction of the city and the death of Moctezuma. While the superior weapons and military tactics of the Spanish played a significant role in their victory over the Aztecs, another crucial factor was the introduction of European diseases, such as smallpox, which devastated the native population. The Aztecs had no immunity to these diseases, and the resulting epidemics killed millions of people weakening the empire and making it easier for the Spanish to conquer. Following the fall of Tenochtitlan, the remaining Aztec territories were gradually absorbed into the Spanish colony of New Spain. The Spanish imposed their culture, religion and language upon the indigenous people, effectively erasing many aspects of Aztec life. However, some elements of Aztec culture, such as their agricultural techniques and artistic traditions, were incorporated into the new colonial society. Despite the fall of the Aztec Empire, its influence can still be felt in modern times. Many aspects of Aztec culture have been preserved and integrated into the fabric of Mexican society. For example, the Nahuatl language once spoken by the Aztecs is still spoken by over a million people in Mexico today. The Aztec calendar, with its intricate system of tracking time and astronomical events, is another aspect of their culture that has endured. While it's no longer in widespread use, the calendar's beautiful artwork and symbolism continue to inspire artists and scholars alike. Moreover, the Aztecs' advanced agricultural techniques, such as the Chinampa system of floating gardens, have been recognized for their sustainability and productivity, with some modern-day farmers adopting these methods to cultivate crops. Additionally, the legend of the founding of Tenochtitlan, in which the Aztecs were guided by an eagle perched on a cactus holding a snake, is immortalized in the Mexican coat of arms and national flag, serving as a reminder of the nation's rich cultural heritage. The Aztecs were an extraordinary civilization that has left an indelible mark on the world. Their architectural and engineering achievements continue to amaze us, and theories surrounding their possible connections to other ancient cultures, extraterrestrials or the Anunnaki only add to the intrigue. While the Aztec Empire may have fallen centuries ago, its legacy lives on in the modern world, enriching our understanding of the past and serving as a testament to the resilience and ingenuity of the human spirit. 
Have you ever wondered about the mysteries surrounding the ancient Inca civilization and its astonishing achievements? The Incas, who ruled over one of the largest empires in the Americas, were renowned for their advanced technology, impressive architecture and intricate social structure. In today's exploration, we will delve into the fascinating world of the Incas, examine theories about possible alien or Anunnaki influences, and uncover connections between their majestic structures and the pyramids of Egypt. So strap in and let's embark on a journey back in time to discover the secrets of the Inca Empire. The Inca Empire, also known as Tawantinsuyu, was the largest empire in pre-Columbian America, spanning a vast territory along the Andes mountain range from modern-day Colombia to Chile. The Incas trace their origins back to the mythical founders, Manco Capac and Mama Oclo, who emerged from the sacred lake Titicaca, as commanded by the sun god Inti. Legend has it that Inti sent his children to establish a new civilization and teach the people how to live in harmony with the land. The city of Cusco, which means navel of the world in the Quechua language, was established as the capital of the empire, and it's from here that the Incas embarked on their remarkable journey of expansion and innovation. The Inca civilization arose in the early 13th century, but it wasn't until the reign of Pachacuti in the mid-15th century that the empire began to expand rapidly. Pachacuti is credited with transforming the small city-state of Cusco into a mighty empire through a combination of diplomacy, military conquest and strategic alliances. The Incas had a unique system of governance, with the ruler known as the Sapa Inca considered to be a divine figure, the son of the sun god Inti. The Inca society was highly stratified with a strict hierarchy of nobles, commoners, and an extensive bureaucracy. The empire was divided into four provinces, each governed by a high-ranking official known as an Apu. As the empire expanded, the Incas assimilated various cultures and people into their own, often incorporating their religious beliefs, customs, and even architectural styles. The Incas were master builders and engineers, leaving behind a legacy of architectural marvels that continue to captivate us today. Let's delve deeper into some of the key aspects of their technology and engineering prowess. Stonework The Incas' extraordinary masonry techniques allowed them to construct massive stone structures without the use of mortar. Their precision is so impressive that even a knife blade cannot fit between the stones. This dry stone technique provided excellent stability and durability, as well as seismic resistance which was vital in the earthquake-prone region of the Andes. The Incas ingeniously adapted to the mountainous terrain by developing agricultural terraces known as Andenes. These terraces not only increased the arable land available for farming but also minimized erosion and facilitated irrigation. They built retaining walls and filled them with layers of soil and gravel, which provided excellent drainage and prevented waterlogging. This enabled them to grow crops like potatoes, quinoa and maize at altitudes that would otherwise have been unsuitable for agriculture. The Incas developed an extensive road system known as the Capac Nyan, which stretched for over 25,000 miles throughout the empire. This network of roads facilitated trade, communication and military movement. They built suspension bridges made of woven grass, which allowed them to cross the many rivers and ravines throughout their territory. These bridges were so innovative that some of them are still in use today. The Incas excelled in hydraulic engineering, harnessing the power of water for both agricultural and domestic use. They constructed intricate systems of canals, aqueducts and reservoirs to transport water from mountain springs to their cities, fields and terraced farms. Their knowledge of hydraulics allowed them to create fountains and even plumbing systems within their palaces, providing their inhabitants with fresh water and sanitation. The Incas were skilled astronomers and used their knowledge of celestial events to plan their cities and sacred sites. Many of their structures, such as the Temple of the Sun in Cusco, were aligned with the solstices and equinoxes, allowing them to function as astronomical observatories. This precise orientation also served a religious purpose, as the Incas believed that their deities were closely connected to celestial events. The advanced knowledge and achievements of the Incas have led some to speculate about possible extraterrestrial or Anunnaki influences on their civilization. Here are some reasons why we can speculate this. The Incas' intricate understanding of astronomy, 
agriculture and engineering has fueled speculation that they may have acquired their knowledge from other worldly sources. Some suggest that extraterrestrial beings, or the Inunaki, a group of deities from Sumerian mythology, might have shared their advanced technologies with the Incas, enabling them to achieve their remarkable feats. Certain artifacts and structures found in the Inca Empire have raised questions about their origins. For example, the twelve-angled stone in Cusco, with its perfectly interlocking edges, has been cited as evidence of advanced machining techniques that were beyond the capabilities of the Incas. Similarly, the megalithic site of Sacsayhuaman, with its colossal stones weighing up to 200 tons, has left some wondering how the Incas managed to transport and fit these massive blocks so precisely without modern equipment. Some proponents of the ancient astronaut theory, which posits that extraterrestrials visited Earth in the distant past and influenced human civilizations, argue that the Incas' advanced knowledge and abilities can be attributed to contact with beings from other planets. They point to similarities between the Inca civilization and other ancient cultures around the world, such as the Egyptians and the Sumerians suggesting that a common extraterrestrial influence might be responsible for their parallel advancements. Inca mythology and religious beliefs also provide some fodder for those seeking connections to extraterrestrials or the Anunnaki. The Incas believed in a pantheon of gods, many of whom were associated with celestial bodies and natural phenomena. The legend of their founders... Manco Capac and Mama Oklo, emerging from Lake Titicaca at the behest of the sun god Inti, can be interpreted as a metaphor for beings descending from the sky or arriving from another world. Although separated by vast distances and distinct cultures, the Incas and ancient Egyptians both managed to achieve remarkable feats of engineering and artistry, which have led some to draw comparisons and look for connections between these two civilizations. Let's explore some of the intriguing similarities and potential links between the Incas and the Egyptians, as well as their connections to other ancient civilizations. The Incas and the Egyptians are both renowned for their monumental architecture, with the Incas constructing impressive structures like Machu Picchu and Sacsayhuaman, and the Egyptians building the iconic pyramids and temples. Both civilizations mastered the art of moving and placing enormous stone blocks with great precision, despite the lack of modern tools and machinery. The similarities in their building techniques have sparked curiosity about potential connections or shared knowledge between these two distant civilizations. Both the Incas and the Egyptians demonstrated an advanced understanding of astronomy, which they incorporated into their architecture and religious practices. As mentioned earlier, many Inca structures, such as the Temple of the Sun in Cusco, were aligned with the solstices and equinoxes. Similarly, the Great Pyramid of Giza in Egypt is precisely aligned with the cardinal directions, and its layout is believed to be astronomically significant, representing the stars in the constellation Orion. These astronomical alignments have fueled speculation about a shared source of knowledge or influence. Despite the vast geographical distance between the Inca and Egyptian civilizations, there are some intriguing cultural similarities between the two. Both societies were highly stratified, with a divine ruler at the top of the social hierarchy, and they both practiced elaborate rituals and ceremonies to honor their gods. These similarities have led some to theorize that a common origin or influence might explain the parallels between the two civilizations. While there is no concrete evidence to support direct contact between the Incas and the Egyptians, some researchers have proposed that indirect contact or cultural exchange might have occurred through intermediary civilizations. This could have facilitated the sharing of ideas, technologies and artistic styles, leading to the development of similar architectural techniques and cultural practices. As mentioned in the previous segment, some proponents of ancient astronaut theories or Anunnaki influences have pointed to the similarities between the Inca and Egyptian civilizations as evidence of extraterrestrial intervention. They argue that beings from other planets may have visited both cultures and shared their advanced knowledge, leading to the parallel advancements seen in these ancient societies. The Inca Empire, despite its remarkable accomplishments and vast territory, ultimately met its downfall in the 16th century. A combination of factors contributed to the collapse of this once mighty civilization, which we will examine in greater detail. The arrival of Spanish conquistadors in the early 16th century marked the beginning of the end for the Inca Empire. 
Led by Francisco Pizarro, the Spanish were driven by a desire for wealth and power, as well as a mission to spread Christianity. In 1532, the conquistadors captured the Inca ruler, Atahualpa, and held him for ransom. Despite the Incas paying an enormous amount of gold and silver, the Spanish executed Atahualpa and proceeded to conquer the remaining Inca territories. Prior to the arrival of the Spanish, the Inca Empire was already weakened by a civil war between two brothers, Atahualpa and Huascar, who were vying for the throne after the death of their father, Emperor Huayna Capac. The infighting fractured the empire and left it vulnerable to external threats, ultimately making it easier for the Spanish to establish control. European diseases such as smallpox, measles and influenza were introduced to the Americas by the Spanish and other European explorers. These diseases spread rapidly among the indigenous populations, including the Incas, who had no immunity to these unfamiliar illnesses. It is estimated that between 50% to 90% of the native population perished due to these epidemics, significantly weakening the Inca Empire and its ability to resist the Spanish conquest. The Spanish conquistadors were equipped with advanced weaponry such as steel swords, firearms and cannons, which gave them a significant advantage over the Inca warriors armed with stone and wooden weapons. Additionally, the Spanish cavalry, mounted on horses, provided a formidable force that the Incas had never encountered before. The combination of superior weapons and horses allowed the Spanish to overwhelm the Inca forces and gain control over their territories. The Spanish also exploited existing rivalries and discontent among the various indigenous groups within the Inca Empire. Many of these groups, seeking to break free from Inca rule, allied themselves with the Spanish, providing valuable assistance in their conquest. These alliances further weakened the Inca resistance and accelerated the empire's collapse. The downfall of the Inca Empire was the result of a combination of internal strife, foreign invasion and devastating disease. Within a few decades, the once powerful civilization was dismantled and its people subjugated under Spanish rule. However, the legacy of the Inca Empire continues to endure through its impressive architectural achievements, cultural traditions and influence on modern-day South America. Have you ever heard of a civilization that vanished almost as mysteriously as it appeared? A civilization that left behind colossal stone heads, each weighing several tons, scattered across the landscape? Well, get ready to dive into the world of the Olmec, one of Mesoamerica's earliest and most influential civilizations, we're going to delve into their origins, their astounding accomplishments, their influence on other civilizations and the riddles surrounding their abrupt disappearance. The Olmec civilization, often referred to as the Mother Culture of Mesoamerica, emerged in the tropical lowlands of south-central Mexico, in what is now the states of Veracruz and Tabasco. This emergence dates back to around 1400 BCE, making the Olmecs the earliest known major civilization in Mexico. While the origins of the Olmec people are shrouded in mystery, archaeological evidence points to a gradual evolution from earlier pre-Olmec cultures. These societies transitioned from mobile hunting and gathering groups to settled agricultural communities, eventually developing the complex social, political and economic systems characteristic of a civilization. However, the specifics of the Olmec's origins remain a subject of debate among scholars. How did these early societies make such a leap in complexity? The Olmec's early advancements in art, architecture and culture have sparked theories of potential influence from even more ancient yet undiscovered civilizations or, as some fringe theorists suggest, from extraterrestrial visitors. The name Olmec itself, meaning rubber people in the Nahuatl language of the Aztecs, wasn't applied until nearly 3,000 years after the civilization's decline. This name was given due to the region's association with the ancient practice of extracting latex from the Castilla elastica tree and mixing it with juice from the Ipomoea alba vine to create rubber. What the Olmec people called themselves, like so many aspects of this civilization, remains a mystery. The colossal stone heads are without a doubt the most iconic artifacts of the Olmec civilization. These massive sculptures, the largest of which stands at 9 feet tall and weighs around 20 tons, exhibit a remarkable level of skill and craftsmanship. They are carved from single blocks of basalt, a volcanic rock that had to be transported over considerable distances before being meticulously sculpted. Each head is unique, featuring individualized facial features that have led some to speculate that they may represent specific Olmec rulers. 
The heads are typically adorned with a helmet-like headdress, possibly used in battle or in the Olmec ball game, an early version of a sport that would later become ubiquitous throughout Mesoamerica. The facial features, with their broad noses and thick lips, are distinct and, some argue, possess an African aesthetic, which has led to controversial theories about transoceanic contact between Africa and the Americas in antiquity. The process of creating these monumental sculptures was far from simple. Imagine the Olmecs without the use of iron tools or the wheel, extracting the enormous boulders from the Tuxla Mountains, then transporting them, most likely through a combination of sledges, ropes and manpower, over tens of kilometers to their final locations. Once transported, the raw boulders were transformed into strikingly lifelike heads through careful patient work with stone tools. The time, labor and resources dedicated to their creation speak volumes about their cultural importance. However, the big question is how did the Olmecs manage to build these massive stone heads without the help of modern tools or technology? This has led to various theories, ranging from simple yet effective engineering and teamwork to the more outlandish proposals involving levitation or, you guessed it, extraterrestrial intervention. These theories notwithstanding, the stone heads of the Olmec remain a testament to the capability and artistic vision of this ancient civilization. Moving into the heart of the Olmec civilization, let's immerse ourselves in the city of La Venta. La Venta, situated on an island in a swampy region, was the most important Olmec center, and it flourished from about 1200 to 400 BC. The city layout reveals a fascinating aspect of Olmec culture. Its design was not haphazard or organically grown, but rather it reflected a carefully planned architectural layout. One of the intriguing aspects of La Venta is the city's orientation. The major architectural features of the city align just slightly east of north, possibly related to the setting of the sun at certain times of the year. This orientation suggests that the Olmecs had advanced knowledge of celestial events leading some to speculate a deep connection between their rituals and the movements of the heavens. The city's main ceremonial area was made up of a massive pyramid, several large platforms and numerous smaller mounds arranged around several plazas. The Great Pyramid of La Venta, also known as Complex C, is one of the earliest pyramidal structures in Mesoamerica and it's the largest monument at the site. Constructed from an estimated 100,000 cubic meters of earth fill, it stands over 30 meters high and it's aligned with magnetic north, again suggesting an understanding of geophysical phenomena. Several colossal stone heads were found at La Venta, along with buried caches of jade Celts and other artifacts, some of which were arranged in peculiar patterns. One such arrangement, known as Offering 4, consisted of a group of 16 figurines made from jade and serpentine, placed in a semicircular formation facing two polished mirrors made of iron ore. These carefully laid out offerings hint at complex ceremonial or religious practices. The engineering prowess displayed in La Venta's city layout and construction, as well as the alignment with astronomical phenomena, has led to speculation about the advanced knowledge the Olmecs possessed. Some theorists go as far as to suggest that this ancient civilization might have had contact with extraterrestrial beings who shared their knowledge or even guided the city's construction. However, while these theories may be fascinating, it's important to remember that concrete evidence supporting such claims remains elusive. The Olmecs were not only renowned for their colossal stone heads and grand city layouts, but they also had a flair for detailed and intricate art and craftsmanship. The diversity and sophistication of their artistry are truly remarkable. The Olmec artisans created a wide range of artifacts, from small figurines and jade kilts to massive sculptures, all exhibiting a high level of skill and artistry. For instance, the jade figurines and masks they crafted are considered some of the finest artifacts from ancient Mesoamerica. Their technique of transforming hard jade, a material tougher than steel, into intricate detailed works of art is truly astounding. The Olmec were also master ceramists. They created an array of pottery items from utilitarian wares to intricate figurines. Their figurines often depict humans, sometimes in the form of babies with wear jaguar features, suggesting a rich mythology and belief system. One of their most iconic works of art is the Wrestler, a life-sized human figure made from basalt. This sculpture demonstrates a profound understanding of human anatomy and movement, and it's considered one of the finest examples of Olmec art. In addition to their tangible art, the Olmecs also left behind traces of their advanced craftsmanship in the form 
of hieroglyphic scripts. Although decipherment of Olmec writing is still in progress, it's clear that they possessed a system of writing further emphasizing their advanced cultural development. Just as with their architectural accomplishments, the advanced art and craftsmanship of the Olmecs has sparked theories about outside influences. Could they have developed these sophisticated techniques on their own, or did they receive help from an advanced civilization or even extraterrestrial entities? While these theories can be fascinating to ponder, it's also crucial to appreciate the remarkable capabilities of the Olmecs themselves. The Olmec civilization, even though it disappeared around 400 BCE, left an indelible mark on the cultures that followed. When we look at the art of the Maya, Zapotec and Aztec, it's clear that the Olmec had a profound influence. The motif of the Ware Jaguar, a figure with both human and Jaguar characteristics that is prominent in Olmec art, is also seen in the art of these later cultures. The Olmec style of carving colossal heads was also adopted by some later cultures, with the best example being the colossal heads carved by the city-state of Tres Zapotes. The Olmec's urban planning and architectural styles were also influential. The E-group architectural complexes found in many Maya cities, which consist of a pyramid and a long building facing each other across a plaza, seem to have their roots in the layout of Olmec centers such as La Venta. But perhaps the most profound influence the Olmec had was on the religious beliefs of later Mesoamerican cultures. Concepts such as the World Tree, a central axis of the cosmos connecting the underworld, the terrestrial realm and the sky, can be traced back to the Olmec. The Mesoamerican ball game, which had both sportive and religious significance, is also thought to have originated with the Olmec. Some theorists posit that the Olmec's advanced knowledge and cultural practices could only have been passed down from a more advanced civilization, perhaps from across the sea or even from extraterrestrial beings. While these ideas are fascinating and the source of much debate, the enduring legacy of the Olmec civilization remains evident in the cultures that succeeded it. The disappearance of the Olmec civilization is something of a mystery. It's important to note that while the Olmec civilization as we define it disappeared, their influence lived on in the cultures that followed. In fact, some Olmec communities may have continued for centuries, their customs and practices blending with those of incoming groups. However, the precise reason for the Olmec's decline remains a mystery. Like many aspects of the Olmec civilization, it's a puzzle that continues to captivate researchers, inviting us to delve deeper into the history of this fascinating culture. Picture this, a perfectly formed human skull made entirely out of quartz crystal. Sounds like something out of a sci-fi movie, right? Well, such objects do exist and they're steeped in mystery and controversy. The most famous of these is the Mitchell Hedges skull, named after its discoverer. But where did this skull come from? Who made it? How was it crafted so perfectly with details that seem beyond the capability of primitive tools? And perhaps most intriguingly, why was it made? Today, let's delve into the enigmatic world of the crystal skulls, starting with the remarkable Mitchell Hedges skull. The discovery of the Mitchell Hedges skull is deeply entwined in the lore of exploration and archaeology. It's the year 1924, and we find ourselves accompanying British explorer Frederick Albert Mitchell Hedges on his journey into the jungles of what is now known as Belize. He was drawn to the region by stories of an ancient city, Lubantun, which translates to City of Fallen Stones in the Mayan language. Mitchell Hedges was not just an explorer, but an adventurer and a writer ever in pursuit of the world's enigmas. His adopted daughter, Anna Mitchell Hedges, was with him on this trip, and she is credited with the skull's discovery. Picture this, a birthday expedition on her 17th birthday, exploring a crumbled altar inside a Mayan temple, when her eyes caught the glint of something unusual beneath the fallen stones. That something was an extraordinarily well-preserved crystal skull, almost perfectly accurate to human anatomy. Anna claimed that upon holding it, she experienced a sense of indescribable awe. This was no ordinary archaeological find. It was a tangible, almost unsettling connection to the mystifying past of an ancient civilization. Or as some skeptics might argue, it was a masterful hoax that would become one of the most controversial artifacts of the 20th century. The debate, it seems, is just as multifaceted as the crystal itself. Diving deeper into the rabbit hole of the Mitchell Hedges skull, let's talk about the skull's unique characteristics. 
a category it reigns supreme in amongst the known crystal skulls. This object of mystery is made from clear quartz crystal, also known as rock crystal, and its size nearly matches a small human cranium. Weighing in at an astonishing 11.7 pounds, the skull's level of craftsmanship is what sets it apart. It's a work of staggering complexity, even down to the minutest detail. The jaws, for instance, are detachable and fit perfectly into the upper cranium. This level of intricacy is a stark contrast to the more traditional fixed jaw designs of other crystal skulls. And let's not forget the prism at the base of the cranium and the lenses in the eye sockets, which create a surprisingly lifelike pair of eyes. But it doesn't stop at mere aesthetics. Its creator's understanding of the material goes beyond basic sculpting. The skull is pieced together in a way that respects the natural axes of the quartz crystal, which would have minimized the risk of the crystal shattering during creation. That's an understanding of crystallography you'd expect from a modern material scientist, not a civilization from over a millennium ago. Then comes the enigma of how it was crafted. Given the hardness of quartz crystal, the use of metal tools would have left discernible tool marks. Yet no such marks are found on the skull. It's as if it was magically shaped without any tools. This absence of tool marks has led to theories of it being wish or thought into existence, though that's a concept even more elusive than the skull itself. Now let's take a journey into the realm of speculation hypotheses and the wild wonderland of unbridled conjecture. As I mentioned earlier, there are numerous theories about the origins of the Mitchell Hedges skull. Some say it's a remnant from lost civilizations like Atlantis or Lemuria, while others suggest extraterrestrial origin. The Atlantean theory, for instance, suggests that the Mitchell Hedges skull, like the other crystal skulls, is a legacy left behind by the mythical civilization of Atlantis, believed by some to have been an advanced society with capabilities beyond our current understanding. Imagine that, a society so developed that they were able to craft an object like this without leaving a single tool mark. Fascinating, isn't it? Meanwhile, the Lemurian theory suggests that the skull was a creation of Lemuria, another legendary lost civilization reputedly located in the Indian or Pacific Ocean. Proponents of this theory believe that Lemuria was home to spiritually advanced beings who used quartz crystal for a variety of purposes, including healing, communication and record keeping. Could the skull be a relic of their high culture? Taking a quantum leap into the realm of science fiction, some propose that the skull was left behind by extraterrestrial visitors. If an alien civilization possessed technology far exceeding our own, it could explain the seemingly impossible craftsmanship, right? Well, maybe. Finally, there's the more grounded archaeological theory that it is a product of pre-Columbian Mesoamerican cultures. The Mesoamericans, especially the Aztecs and Mayans, were known for their intricate carvings and detailed artworks. Yet even their abilities would be pushed to the limit by the creation of something as intricate as the Mitchell Hedges skull. Each theory, however fantastical, adds another layer to the enigmatic allure of the skull. It invites us to question, to wonder, and most importantly, to keep exploring the mysteries of our past, whether they be grounded on Earth or scattered across the cosmos. Ah, controversy. It's the spice that makes any mystery more tantalizing. And trust me, when it comes to the Mitchell Hedges skull, there's no shortage of controversy. Firstly, the story of its discovery has been called into question. Anna Mitchell Hedges, the one credited with discovering the skull, didn't actually mention the find until many years after the supposed event. Also, there's no official archaeological documentation or field notes that mention the skull's discovery. The absence of these records raises eyebrows, doesn't it? Moreover, questions have been raised about the skull's physical characteristics. Despite its remarkable detail, some skeptics argue that the skull's perfect prismatic finish could only be achieved with modern tools and techniques. In fact, a study by the British Museum suggested that the skull was likely carved using jeweler's equipment developed in the 19th century. This contradicts the idea that it's a product of an ancient civilization. Perhaps the most compelling criticism comes from the fact that no similar skulls have been found in any confirmed archaeological excavations. Most other known crystal skulls have been proven to be fakes, further casting a shadow of doubt over the authenticity of the Mitchell Hedges skull. To add to the intrigue, the skull's provenance prior to its discovery is murky. 
F.A. Mitchell Hedges, Anna's adoptive father, was actually in possession of the skull before the claimed discovery. He reportedly purchased it at a Sotheby's auction in London in 1943. It's a whirlwind of mystery, and while the allure of the skull tempts us to romanticize its origin, we must remember the importance of empirical evidence and methodical investigation. After all, it's the pursuit of truth that leads us on these thrilling journeys of inquiry, isn't it? Now, despite all the skepticism and controversy, the Mitchell Hedges skull continues to captivate us. There's something about an unresolved mystery, isn't there? It's like a puzzle that's missing a few pieces. Frustrating, yes, but intriguing all the same. Let's step back for a moment. We've pondered over the origins of the skull, marveled at its physical characteristics, and even dived into the whirlpool of skepticism. But what does this enigmatic artifact represent in the grander scheme of things? In one way, the skull is a symbol of human curiosity. We yearn to uncover the secrets of our past, to understand our roots. And sometimes, in this search, we stumble upon artifacts like the skull which defy easy explanation. They challenge our perceptions, pushing us to rethink and reassess our understanding of history. Moreover, the skull also represents the ongoing debate between belief and skepticism, between faith in extraordinary tales and adherence to empirical evidence. It's a testament to our eternal quest for knowledge and the hurdles we face in separating fact from fiction. Finally, the skull is a reminder of the rich tapestry of human culture. Whether it's a relic from a lost civilization or a more recent creation, it bears the marks of human craftsmanship, creativity and ingenuity. It serves as a mirror, reflecting our own preoccupations with mystery, power and the unknown. So there it is, the Mitchell Hedges skull, a prism through which we explore not just history, but also the human condition. It's more than just an artifact. It's a symbol, a challenge, a story. There is an undeniable fascination associated with the crystal skulls. They have permeated popular culture, appearing in novels and even Hollywood films. But why? Why are these skulls so important? Crystal skulls, including the Mitchell Hedges skull, hold a certain enigmatic charm. Their allure stems from the intricate craftsmanship they display and the mysteries that surround their origins. This combination captivates the human imagination, invoking a sense of wonder and curiosity. But their importance extends beyond their aesthetic appeal or the mysteries they present. These skulls encourage us to explore the realms of archaeology, history and even spirituality. They foster an interest in ancient civilizations and their cultural practices, pushing us to expand our knowledge and understanding of our shared human past. In the context of spirituality, many people believe that these skulls hold a special energy or power. They are seen as tools for healing, meditation and personal development. Whether or not you subscribe to these beliefs, the skulls do encourage introspection and a quest for personal growth. And let's not forget their role in stimulating scientific inquiry. The controversy surrounding the authenticity of the skulls has prompted rigorous scientific investigation. Techniques such as electron microscopy and computerized tomography CT scans have been used to study the skulls, leading to advancements in archaeological analysis. So the importance of the crystal skulls is multifaceted. They are not just objects of historical interest, but catalysts for cultural, spiritual and scientific exploration. These skulls continue to hold our attention, urging us to question, to explore and to learn, making our world just a bit more fascinating. So, what are we left with? The crystal skulls, especially the Mitchell Hedges skull, remain an enigma. They encapsulate the intrigue of archaeology, the allure of ancient civilizations, the contention of scientific debate and the curiosity of spiritual seekers. Whether these skulls are truly the work of ancient Mesoamericans, extraterrestrial beings or merely skilled forgers, one thing is certain, they continue to fascinate us, to challenge our understanding and to spur us on in our quest for knowledge. And as always, thanks for watching.